enough yet. Are you ready now? Every single free choice you make arises from either a thought of love or a thought of fear. There is no other choice. And if I had one thing to say about what we're trying to understand here tonight, it would be, it would be this. That feeling inside of you, that love inside of you, that's God expressing through you, as you. Yes. My name is Daisy, and I just wanted to say I loved your book. Thank you, Daisy. And I'm, I'm feeling like I finally understand what it means to be awake in my own life. Feels good, doesn't it? It's totally amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I walk around feeling like I've been given a secret. Well, the secret is out. <laughs> The problem I've been having is that some of my friends, even my family, if I say anything remotely spiritual, they get this glazed look on their face. And I know that look because it's the same look I've had or used to have every day of my life. I know exactly what that feels like. And the good news is you're not crazy. Good. <laughs> we're both crazy. And if that's the case, we're in very good company. <laughs> Instead of worrying about what people think about you, concentrate on what you think about you. That's important. Any regrets? Many. Care to name a few? You're not a lawyer, are you? I wish, I wish that, that I could have come, come to this point, point in my life without, without hurting. hurting. Wish, wish I'd come, come to this point, point in my life without, without hurting so many people, especially the people I've loved. But without them, I might not have come to this point in my life. See, it's important for all of us to remember that the universe is conspiring in our favor, always, and in all ways, despite circumstances and appearances, or most importantly, our perception of them. You've got a lot of nerve. I'm sorry? You're a hypocrite. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Standing up there preaching about God and love. You've been married and divorced a lot. If you talk to God, how come you can't keep a commitment with a woman?
And I can't tell you how many times I've asked myself that same question. The women in my life are all wonderful. And they treated me a whole lot better than I treated them. I betrayed them. I let them down. I let my kids down, too. I admit that. More than that, I cannot say without invading their privacy, and that I am not going to do. What I can do is love as much as I can from where I am. To make every gesture and action sponsored by love. Sounds to me like you've written a book of lies. If what you're asking me is, did I make all of this stuff up? The answer is no. I've wondered what you're wondering. Will anyone believe me? Believe what I'm saying? Believe where this came from? And I guess that that's up to you, to each of you. I only hope that you don't disqualify or marginalize the message because it's coming through such a fallible messenger. My name is Kay, and I just wanted to thank you for admitting your mistakes. Well, thank you, Kay, um, and all of you, but the truth of it is I'm still making those mistakes to this day, and that's why these conversations with God are such a miracle for me. They, they came out of a need, a desperate personal need for me to change my life. And, um, you know, uh, if I've been <coughs> successful at it in the way I'd like, I don't know, but, but it's the way it happened, and it's the way it's, it's still happening. My question is, if God has one message, his most important message to all of us, and you could put it in one paragraph, what would it be? Well, I could fit it into five words. You've got me all wrong. Here's your plane ticket. You're on the 10 o'clock. Thanks for everything, and I'll see you in New York. I'm trying, honey. You could have fooled me. Look, I, I don't get this. I've got experience. Your experience has nothing to do with anything. And we've been over this, Neil. Mm -hmm. As long as that bow tie's around your neck, nobody's going to take a chance on hiring you. Really? So what is it exactly that you people do around here? Mostly, we hand out checks to people who blame us for their problems. Sorry. What did the hospital say? 
Well, I said I should start feeling better in a few days, but uh, it's been almost a, a month now. Well, they seem to have missed something. What? Neil. You have a broken neck. Mr. Walsh, it's Michael. Come on, Mr. Walsh. I know you're in there. No, I'm not. You're three months behind on your rent. I told you I lost my... Your job. Job, yeah. Yes, I know. And I'm sorry about your accident, Neil. But I'm not going to lose my job because you lost yours. Come on, I'm out there. Every day I am, I'm trying. Isn't there someone you can call? No, those calls were made a long time ago. I mean, I got... I got nowhere to go. Five o'clock, Neil.
Let me die here. To God, there is no separation between financial abundance and spirituality. In fact, they go hand in hand. Don't you find it odd that we live in a society that devalues our most important jobs? What do you mean by that? I mean, we have no problem giving a football coach five million a season mm -hmm. or, or an actor 10 million per movie, but somehow we've got it wired where people involved with spirituality should be penniless, celibate, and, and abstinent. Mm -hmm. And preferably all three. You know? yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I, don't, I don't remember voting for any of that. So imagine a world where money was given to people who give us the biggest gifts. Yeah. Teachers, oh, yeah. artists, yeah. nurses, yeah. Uh, firemen, you know, policemen, <laughs> writers. <laughs> and mothers! Mother, yes. Mother, that's right. Yes. People who connect us, not disconnect or, or, or distract us. You know, imagine that world and we can have it because people, we're the ones. We've always been the ones that we've been waiting for. We are. We are. You awake in there? I said, are you awake in there? Just a minute. Morning. Uh, good morning. Name is Oscar. How about you step out of that tent for a minute? Uh, what for? I know you got in late, but I run things around here. And you should be aware of the rules. Uh, rules? Yeah, I'll walk you through them. How about you come a little bit closer so I don't have to yell? Okay. Okay. Rent is $25 per week. Right. Over there, you've got your bathrooms. Now, our maid quit about a month ago, 
so we'd appreciate it if you would clean up after yourself. Okay. Those cabins back there, oh. freight on them, 75 per week. Already. All right. Now down by the water, you've got another yeah. picnic area. Those are reserved for real campers and real campers only. Uh, real campers? They usually arrive by automobile. They tend to stick around a couple of days and yeah. move on. A guy like yourself comes up in the rain with a tent and a bedroll. We call them professional campers around here. Yeah. You professionals have a way of lingering on. Kind of like those guys over there. <laughs> I should be back on my feet in a few days as soon as I uh, find a job. Because you got in late, Last night's on the house. The collection for the week starts on Friday at 3 p.m. If you're here, I expect payment on time. There's no exceptions. Okay. If not, you're out. We understand each other? Uh, yes, yes we do. Well, good morning to you then. And by the way, yeah. if I were you, I would put that cover on top of your tent. What's it for? for the rain. I see you have lots of experience. Radio, that says a lot. Uh, why don't you have a resume? That doesn't matter. How about you tell me why Osborne and Associates should hire someone like you? We have over 20 applicants. Why you? Well, uh, despite outward appearances, I've held supervising positions for three companies. Yeah, which makes me wonder about your work ethic. Or maybe you're on some type of desultory path. It means lack of purpose. Yeah, well, the truth of it is I was laid off when the stations were bought out and consolidated. I mean, everything's corporate now, and I'm nearing 50 and so overqualified that you're probably not going to hire me, are you? Well, the thing of it is, most applicants carry a master's degree. You don't. No, I don't, but I still think I can do a good job for Osborne and Associates. Well, around here, we demand excellence. Mr. Walsh, not good. I'm sorry. Okay, listen, I, I, I really need this job. You're overqualified. Next. Next, chef, let's go. Hey, don't let them get to you. Outsiders make them a little bit jumpy, that's all. So I'm guessing you're gonna be sticking around for the week. I'm sorry. It's harder than you thought, isn't it? Look, there's a convenience store in the corner. They've got a recycling center. That's how these guys pay their rent. You get yourself a bag of aluminum cans, you're halfway to making the week. Bag a day, you get your food, you get your drink. I don't, no, I, I don't drink, thanks. Yeah, stick around here long enough, you will.
You scared me. What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, I... these are mine. This is my area. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't know. No. Now you do. In that Oakley. Yeah, I didn't know there were territories. <laughs> well, we call them areas. Yeah, well, he could have just told me I didn't think giving them the damn cans. Yeah, well, a man who lies on threats to communicate yeah. usually indicates a weak cause. Hey, don't let it bother you. Okay. Sure is pretty, isn't she? Who is she? That's Sunny. Yeah, I wouldn't mind changing her tire if you know what I mean. <laughs> How long have you been saying that? Dreams don't have deadlines. I got a better chance than you do, you old fart. I beg to differ. Then you keep on begging. Hey, thanks. You okay? Well, compared to what? <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a point. Yeah. What happened to your neck? Oh, that's a bull riding accident. It wasn't pretty. Well, then I'd say today's a better day. Uh, it ain't Irish, but it's effective. Uh, no, thanks. I don't drink. Something wrong with you? I just never got around to it, really. Huh. Hell of a thing. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you keep him. I'll help you get going. All right, what's the catch? Yesterday you looked at me like I ran over your dog. I don't have a dog. <laughs> Something you'll soon figure out. People on the street, hardest friends to make. Even tougher ones to lose. Does that mean we're friends? <laughs> Not yet. Catching up on your reading? Oh, it's a padding for under my sleeping bag. Neil, come on in here. Come on. I'm not going to bite you. Come on in here. You boys hungry? Neil? You sure you have enough? Son, the right dumpster always has enough. Man's just got to know where to look. That's what it is. Any guacamole? Sometimes I wonder. I'm not in the mood, chef. I'm really not. Monday, now that's going to be your slow day. Here we go. Tuesday and Wednesday, things are going to pick up, but only just a little. Now, your fast food, you're going to see that on Thursday, mostly because folks racing around like a bunch of crazy rats trying to make it through the work week. Why? Because Friday's payday. Now, you take Saturday night, your date night, that's when folks pay most for their food, which is why you'll see the guacamole on Saturday. Why, you ask? It's because of the... Help me out here, Fitch. Discretionary. Income, exactly. This is almost done. And Sunday is going to be your slow day because most folks eat at home. OK, boys, get your plates. Neil? Come and get it. Uh, no, uh, but thanks. Boy's still wet behind his ears. Ah, I'll let him go. You'll be back. Yo, do you need something, buddy? Yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, we, we got two bathrooms. Thank you. Where do you think you're going? Uh, to the bathroom. Oh, you need to use the head. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, you see across the alley, that tree over there? You see it? Yes. Good. And go lift your leg up on that with the rest of the dogs. You people make me sick. Why can't you get a job like everybody else? What's the problem? He thinks he's coming inside to use the bathroom. In and out, OK?
Harry. Yeah. I'm the uh, uh, I'm the janitor. <laughs> Harry. Um, Harry, how do you how, how did you like the book? Oh, it's 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 wonderful. I've been waiting for this day ever since your name came on the schedule months ago. Oh well, here. Um, let me uh, let me show you to the uh, to the green room. Yeah. I just, um, listen, Harry. Um, uh, what did you like about the book? Oh, I, I don't want to bother you. Oh, not bothering me at all. I'm uh, I'm interested. I spent a lifetime in anger toward my father. I'm not going to stand here and drop sugar all over this because my old man was a mean old cuss. I hated him. Uh, strong words, I know, but true. And this book, your book, helped me finally after 20 years of that anger, that, that hatred, to, well, to f forgive my father. What I was feeling about my father was really what I was feeling about myself. And I had to forgive myself for the feelings I had, the anger I had toward my father. That's the first time I think I've ever said that out loud. Well, here, here. Page three. I know your book. Sure do. <laughs> my most common form of communication is through feeling. Feeling is the language of the soul. If you want to know what's true for you about something, Look to how you're feeling about it. Fitch? 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 Can you hear me, Fitch? Jesus, I'm drunk and I'm deaf. Why are you doing this? I'm not doing anything. Don't start with me. You're killing yourself, you know that? Don't ask me to stop drinking. I can't do that. You're gonna be a real pain in the ass, aren't you? Thank you.
Good morning, programming. Oh, yes, I'm calling about the admin page. Come again? <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Um, could I speak with the program director, please? He's on air at the moment. What can I help you with? Well, I'm calling about the ad uh, for the weekend radio DJ. Hello? That ad wasn't supposed to run until next week. Well, I'm holding the paper in my hand. Which paper? The Ashland Daily t uh, Tidings. I'm sorry, what is the date today? Today, November 7th. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm still here. Sorry. Um, is there a position available? Yeah, it's been a revolving door around here for the last six months. Tell you what, how about I take your name and number, and I'll make sure Roy gives you a call. Is there any chance I could converse with Roy today? He's extremely preoccupied at the moment, but I'll see what I can facilitate. At what number can he reach you? Uh, yes, y yes, uh, he, he can reach me at, um, he can reach me at 555-7507. And my name is Neil. Hello, Neil. I'm Leora. Nice chatting with you. Yes, well, it's been nice chatting with you, too, Leora. Thank you, and bye-bye, and look forward to the call. <laughs> Tomorrow would be great. Yeah, sure. Now check. Bleed the line. Just that bleed the line. Okay. Uh, you know where we are? KYOL. I gotta get home. I'm, I'm sure I can find you, Leora. <laughs> okay, then we'll see you tomorrow. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Get it. Get it. So let me get this straight. What you're saying is that we're all having a conversation with God all of the time. Of course. Can you give me an example of what you mean by that? Sure. Um, do you ever pick up the phone to call someone and they're already on the line? Or uh, do you ever drive down the road feeling as though nothing makes sense of your life and the next song on the radio speaks directly to you? It's as if the lyrics were written specifically for you and suddenly everything falls into perspective. Or, um, or what about when someone enters your life seemingly from, from nowhere and you wonder why they are there and then one day it all makes sense and you wonder how you ever got along without them of course well, we've all had those moments that is god well it happened to him it can happen to you it is happening to you and you i stand corrected we'll be right back with neil donald walsh and his book conversations with god
I knew I had something back there that would work. Great. And uh, thanks for thanks for cleaning up the shirt as well. It's a little unemployable. It's only fear. Well, it's easy for you to say you're not the one going back out there. If it doesn't work. What if it does? Neil, you're afraid to give up the very thing in yourself that brought you here in the first place. Give up? I'm running on empty. And that's why you're here. Uh, well, no, I'm here because uh, because I lost my job. You're here because you lost yourself. Well, uh, right now I just want to get this job. You will. Mm -hmm. You're ready for that now. This is your opportunity to experience real love. What did you have in mind? For you to be a man. A real man, Neil. Not a predator. How many women is it going to take? How far do you need to fall before you realize that your behavior is an attempt to destroy yourself? Feel that. And you'll be free. Come here, Neil. Let's have a look at you. Come here. Didn't I tell you she was some miracle worker? So how'd it go? I don't know. Son, we've been trying to get a look inside her trailer for years. How is it? It's good. She make her head spin? She made his head spin. How are we doing on time? Fitch, you with us? Yeah, yeah. Neil, we know what a, what a big deal this is for you. Help you with the bus fare. And you got enough time to get a hot breakfast, too. Maybe some bacon, eggs, pancakes with syrup, and toast. Don't forget to toast. And some jelly, grip if they have it. And some biscuits, maybe some biscuits with... You eat with... this breakfast or huh? Guys, thanks. Go on now. Yeah, go on, Neil. My man is stepping up. Yeah. Funny, huh? What's the big deal if someone wants to look at your watch, right? Hey, have we met before? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I'm Carly. Hi. Uh, you come here often? <clears throat> Name's Neil. Neil. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, because if you had, I would have seen you, right? I'm like a fixture on this bus. Whew, that's me. You'd think one of these days I would buy a car? Nope. I love people too much. I'm a receptionist. I work for a construction company up in Medford. We are getting crazy busy lately. Yeah, no, because the thought of sitting in a car by myself all day long, not for me. I love people. Wait, I said that already, didn't I? No. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Call me crazy. <laughs> it's nice meeting you. Oh, are you getting off? Uh, you know, I, I think so. Shoot. God, isn't that just how life is? I mean, people just moving in and moving out, and you never know why. Or if you're ever even going to see them again. I never thought about it that way. Makes you think, doesn't it? Oh, goodbye. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to say goodbye. See you later, till we meet again. Anything but goodbye. I mean, goodbye is something that you say when you walk out on a bad job or you leave a bad lover. Yeah. 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 Well, um, see you later. <laughs> later. <laughs> hey, now that's what I'm talking about. You've been listening to Fat Friday Morning Freakout Show. Bob and Jane will be here with me on Monday. They got a new book called Breaking Up with Mommy or Daddy or Your Cousin or whatever the damn name is. 
And they're going to be doing a book signing at Medford Pegasus Bookstore starting at 7 p.m. On Monday, I will be talking to an angry deli worker. He's mad at you idiots who go and order sliced turkey breast, and then at the last minute change it over to sliced ham. And then for coming in and at 8 o'clock at night, Good morning. when their slicers are all you must cleaned be Neil. up and everything, yes. that's going to be it Leora, for me. we spoke on the phone. I'm Rock and Roy, the morning boy. <laughs> Thanks for getting You're me on in. You're on KYOL. You're not in yet. Stay young, stay still cool. still to meet Roy. He's a handful. You tell Jenny I want to talk to her. I don't remember approving this uh, drunk Russian guy for tomorrow's show. Nobody cares about this. I mean, so what? If he drank too much vodka and fell out of a six-story building and lived to tell about it, that, that's actually pretty funny. Okay, yeah, we go with the drunk Russian guy, but uh, just give me a list of backups in case he turns out to be a dud. And make sure that he is not drunk, because I... Who the hell is this? This is your nine o'clock for the weekend slot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, hi. Hi. Uh, just head in. I'll be right in. You bet. Okay? Listen, next time I'm talking about my personal affairs, and it would be nice if you let me know there's someone standing right there. If you take a breath once in a while, I would be happy to. Just get me the files, all right? Cancel this lunch. Oh, man. I am sorry about all these delays. I have had a, just a crazy month. Uh... So how are you, uh, uh, Nick? Uh, uh, Neil. Neil. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, Leora is very impressed with you. She says that you have some good experience. Mm. Well, uh, I was on the air for a while in Baltimore and then down south for a few years after that. I've always been around radio in my career. Uh, you know what? Listen, I can make people enjoy the sound of leaves falling on the radio. How do you do that? You're going to have to hire me to find out. What are your Saturday afternoons like? Saturday afternoon be okay. It's a four hour slot. Is that going to fit in your schedule? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You're hired. Great. I'll see you on Saturday. Shut the door. So I'm going to call you um, about the about the new mix. I think that sounds great, and your ideas were perfect. Hey, <laughs> see ya. My ideas were perfect. My ideas were perfect. My ideas were perfect. My ideas were. Right. 
So, you know, it's where I am right now. You know what? I'm with great friends <laughs> right now, and I, I, that's what I'm happy about. So cheers. Yeah. It's a great Get friend. the best cabin in the park here. Out of house. That's right. Get the best cabin <laughs> in the park. Bon appetit. <laughs> Morning to you too. <laughs> Hello, Neil. Hey, uh, Leora, what are you doing here? Oh, nice to see you too. I'm sorry, I thought you lived in Medford for some reason. Born and raised right here in Ashland. And you, do you live around here? Neil, old boy. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Look at you. Mr. the big time now. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're gonna introduce me to your utterly gorgeous lady friend? Um, uh, Leora, this is Fitch. Fitch, this is Leora. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Yeah. Aren't you easy on the eyes? Uh, Fitch, can we talk later, do you think? Oh, don't be silly. I'll join you for a drink. Oh, don't worry. Even though you're the only friend I know with a job, I brought my own. Fitch. <laughs> Unless you'll be moving this little gathering back to your new cabin. Fitch. <laughs> you sly old dog. I see how you operate. My friend here has got a nice cabin. You really must see it. It comes with a nice cot. Probably fit the two of you in a pinch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Here, here, let me. It's talk. okay. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Here, oh, please let, let stop. Me, let me. <laughs> oh, oh. And down he goes. I should go. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. $25 per week. Over there, you've got your bathroom. Now, our maid quit about a month ago, so we'd appreciate it if you could clean up after yourself. I should come by, see if you needed any help. Is that it? Yep. Strange to think everything I own fits in a duffel bag. There's nothing wrong with traveling late. <laughs> we should probably talk about the other day. It's not necessary. It is. From what I remember, it is. Sonny seems to think it happened because I wasn't prepared for you to get out of here before me. And since I've never known the woman to blow smoke, amazing, huh? Make it all the way to 60 years old. One moment, I'm back to being a jealous kid. That's stupid. You're good to be getting out. Well, it's like you said, friends on the street, hardest ones to make. Tougher ones to lose.
Does that mean we're friends? Not yet. Leora? Roy? Anybody? It's Neil! Hey, what are you doing sleeping on a bench? Looking for you. God, that's a trip. Everyone was gone? Yeah. Just when things were getting better. What do you mean? Well, I mean... I mean, look at you. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen you out of work clothes. Yeah, don't I look good? Oh, yeah, you look great. It's a, it's a great look on you. Yeah, I'm heading over to the Black Sheep for happy hour with the girlfriends. They have killer drink specials. Jimmy, the bartender, <gasps> whoo, whoo, makes the best Long Island iced teas in town. Oh, God, I look like hell. I think you look beautiful. 
All right, Neil, what's up? Nothing, what? Oh, come on. First you tell me I look nice, now I look beautiful. Spill. I don't know, I just... I've just been, you know, thinking about you, us, a lot. Neil. When I'm with you, I feel like things, they, things just fit. I mean, I like myself. It's like you're a, you know, you're a best friend. You gotta feel that too, right? Neil. Okay, fine. You're in your 20s, I'm in my 40s. What's the big deal? Are you nuts? That's a driver's license and a nine-year-old. Don't get weird on me. Just out of sorts, I'm gonna. Just gonna sit here and think for a little bit. I'll take the next bus. Goodbye, Neil. Right. to the questions you're asking? Are you going to answer me? You've asked a lot of questions. You're angry. And now I ask you, do you really want to know the answers to the questions you're asking? Or are you just venting? This is crazy. I know what you're thinking. And I talk to everyone. All the time. In their own voice. The question is, who listens? From the highest mountain it has been shouted, in the lowest place its whisper has been heard. And through the corridors of all human experience, this truth has been echoed. Love is the answer. You have projected the role of parent onto God, and have thus come up with a God who judges and rewards or punishes. You have created a fear-based reality around love. And this fear-based love reality dominates your experience of love. Indeed, it actually creates it. Is it fear that you need in order to be, do, and have what is intrinsically right? Must you be threatened in order to be good? And what is being good? Who gets the final say about that? I tell you this. You are your own rule maker. You set the guidance. Love is all there is. Yes, you've heard it before. In fact, I've even put it on a bumper sticker for you. But in times of trouble, in times of worry, doubt, or fear, you choose to forget. What you should do is answer the simple question, what would love do now? To live your life without expectation, without the need for specific results, that is freedom. Remember, you are constantly in the act of creating yourself. You are, in every moment, deciding who and what you are. 
You decide this largely through the choices you make regarding who and what you feel passionate about. I gotta tell you, I'm a little worried about what people might say when I tell them I'm having a conversation with you. Worry is the activity of a mind that does not understand its connection with me. Hmm. Do you remember the question, what would love do now? Of course. Answer that question, Neil, and I will be there. Always. In all ways. Suffering has nothing to do with events, but with one's reaction to them. What's happening is merely what's happening. How we feel about it is another matter. I just want my life back. You can't have anything you want. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? You just said I can't have anything I want. That's right. What? You can't have anything you want. I can't have anything I want. Correct. Well, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does. Your very request is one of lack, and you saying you want a thing only works to produce that precise experience, wanting in your reality. Yeah. Should I therefore punish you for making a choice that I myself have laid before you? This is a question you must ask yourself before you would assign me the role of a condemning god. Unendingly have you beseeched me, show myself, explain myself, reveal myself. I am doing so here in terms so plain you cannot misunderstand. I am here, right here, right now. Now is the time to go to your God space, more than ever. It will bring you great peace of mind. And from a peaceful mind do great ideas flow. Ideas which could be solutions to the biggest problems you imagine yourself to Do you to imagine have. this is too big a problem for me to solve? Is getting out of this jam too big a miracle for me to handle? I understand that you may think it's too big for you to handle, even with all the tools I've given you, but do you really think it's too big for me? Sometimes you frustrate the hell out of me. I would think that'd be a good thing. This is supposed to be funny. Well, who do you think invented humor? <laughs> Bless you. I just... I don't know what you want from me. Neil, uh -huh. you've got me all wrong. And you've got you all wrong, too. I don't want anything from you other than for you to be happy. But you think you are below me, when in truth we are all one. There is no separation. I want for you what you want for you. Nothing more, nothing less. I am not concerned about your worldly success. Only you are. You are not to worry about making a living. True masters are those who have chosen to make a life rather than a living. Go ahead, do whatever you really love. Do nothing else. You have so little time. How can you think of wasting a moment doing something for a living that you don't like to do? That is not a living. That is a dying. Neil? Neil? Mm. What are you having me type? Uh, still trying to figure that out. What time is it? Neil. It's amazing. No, what's, what's amazing? This stuff is distracting me while I'm at work. Oh. And I love it. I don't care if this is going to sound weird or what people might think about me for saying something like this, but <laughs> I've been asleep. Stuck in this perpetuating nightmare of a life, primarily built on fear and doubt. 
You really want to know how much time I've spent in my life worrying about how I was going to make a living? Worried about making ends meet? I don't want to spend my life making a living either. I want to spend my life making a life. A life that makes a difference. A life built on love and compassion. And this stuff, Neil, I'm even rereading things. I've already finished. <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying to you? I do, I do. Listen, I gotta tell you, it's, it's like I'm just standing by. I'm just taking dictation. Like, I, I can't stop. Why would you? Leora, this is gonna be a book. Not just one book. <sighs> this should complete book one. I've already got uh, six more filled with material for book two. Oh, you better get busy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, listen, I know I'm not paying you. Stop. I don't expect you to work for free. But Neil, we're friends. Besides, just think of all the money I'll be saving on therapy. <laughs> okay. I want to make a deal. If something does happen from this, uh, I want to share some of the profits with you. If you want to create abundance for yourself, create it for someone else. Did I write that? Oh, my friend, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Doesn't fit into your line of books. Well, that's the point. anybody's line of books. Okay, Bob. Let's see if you actually read your own mail. Hello. Neil Walsh? Yeah, it used to be. Bob Friedman, Hampton Roads Publishing. Hey, Bob. You took the dare. Yes. And I like your style, Neil. Go and get what you want, go right to the top. Exactly what I would do if I was a man in your position. Uh, what, what, what exactly is my position? Uh, you're about to become a published author, Neil. You're, you're kidding. I never kid about money. We're going to start out with 5,000 copies. Okay, what happens after my family gets done reading it, Bob? <laughs> Optimism. I like that. I believe in the book. So do I. Which is why we're putting this on the fast track. Okay. My office will call your people. They'll work out the details. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, Bob, I am my people. Not anymore, Neil. Now you've got yourself a partner. I'll be in touch. Gotcha. The woman's name is Sharon Parker. She's a pro. Trust me, Neil, it shows. Just let me do the talking. Okay, what about Warner Books? Are we still gonna meet with them? 
Well, I'll circle back next week if I have to, but Putnam, Putnam is the future. Remember, don't react to anything Sharon says. This game is one without emotion. Yeah. All right? Okay? Now let's go have some fun. I'm sure you're very aware that we've had numerous inquiries from other majors about Neil's book. Any offers? Aren't there always, Sharon? <laughs> well, that's what makes life interesting, don't you think, Bob? Did you have an offer in mind, Sharon? Well, before we get to that, I've been in this business for over half my life. And with the exception of four years at one of the giant firms, I've been with Putnam. And I think even Bob will agree that that is pretty rare in our business. People have no loyalty. Truth is, the world we live in is getting tougher. Times are changing. How much, Sharon? Now, you probably wonder why I am telling you all of this. How much, Sharon? I am telling you all of this because there is, at Putnam, I believe, a soul behind the company. Yes, we have a lot of titles, but we also have the ability to maintain the soul of a small press like Bob's. And when I heard that Hampton had your title, I was pleased. Sharon, how much? We are prepared to offer you one million dollars for the worldwide rights to conversations with God. Thank you for the nice words. I really appreciate them, as I'm sure Neil does. And I agree with you. Putnam does have a soul. They also have buying power. And unfortunately, at that number, Hampton Roads will have to pass. Thank you for coming out. Neil, mm -hmm. shall we? Yeah, I thought we were coming here with a very generous offer today, Bob. <laughs> so did I. This guy is booked back to back, solid for the next two months, Sharon. I, I can't print the book fast enough. And I think we can both agree this is merely the tip of a very big iceberg. Come on, Sharon. I thought you said you liked the book. I do like the book, Bob. And I'm prepared to give you one million reasons why I like it. We can do a million on our own. In fact, I'll send you a postcard when we do. Neil? Mm. Time to go. <clears throat> Tom, thank you. Bob? Wait for it. <sighs> One five, take it or leave it. So why do you want the book? Well, you might think this is a little old-fashioned. But I think your book could change the world. It's yours. It's hers, Bob. It's mine. Of course. At 1.5 million. Yes, Bob. At 1.5 million. Neil, why don't you pick up the check for us? I'm going to walk Sharon out, tie up a few loose ends. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Bob, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Congratulations, Neil. Michael? Okay. Nicely now done. listen. I'm so glad you think so. The book cover, we're keeping that. I have some very definite ideas about it. I've got the artwork already laid out. I think we just need to take a look at it. Come by the office. Hey, Neil. Hmm? Hey, Neil. Economics. I have a test in 45 minutes, and I'm dreading it. Oh. You in university? 12 credits to go, and I'm done. Just in time for summer, I guess. Well, maybe by next summer. I'm lucky. I have a son. Between daycare and my other job in class, things uh, are a little slower in my life. Well, good luck on the test. Thank you. More coffee? No, I'm, uh, I'm so very good. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, my God. Come 
My God, too. This is a small percentage? It was a really big check. <laughs> Forgive me, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but this is a lot of money. Well, I thought you could use it for the for the remodel. You know, you could do it upright. No, I can't take this. Leora, I want you to have this. Also, by the way, we did make a deal. Right? <laughs> hmm? uh, Tommy, Neil's here. Tell him to come in. We're staying for breakfast. Okay. We need to celebrate. Okay. <laughs> what are you having? It'll add one, maybe two days in Russia. That's all they're asking. Well, I don't care what they're asking. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I haven't been home in two weeks. I'm tired. Just think about it. Just think about it. Whose side are you on, anyway? God's. You know, I wish I, I, wish I knew. Um, maybe it's because I've screwed up so much in my life. I don't know. But what I do know is that this is not about me. It's it's about Leora, I think. Uh, I've I... been to your lectures, Mr. Walsh, and I read your book about how God is this friendly God and the universe is a friendly place. And you don't, you don't believe that? I believe your God is a vengeful God. I adopted my son when he was six months old because I was told I could never have children. And we never told Jimmy that he was adopted until um, he was old enough to understand what that meant. And at 14, we decided it was time. His grades fell off. His whole attitude changed. I mean, he got in trouble at school. It was, it was a big mess. And he was angry at his mother for giving him up. He was angry at us for, for telling him. And he was angry at everything in his life. The only way to calm him down was to promise that when he turned 18, we would find his mother. No matter the cost, no matter how long it took, we promised him that he would get to meet his mother. And did his attitude change? Marginally, but um, the son we once knew, the son we loved so dearly, was, um, was gone. And he never called me mother again. And on Jimmy's 18th birthday, he was killed on a motorcycle. A drunk driver killed my Jimmy. So please enlighten me on your definition of a friendly God, Mr. Walsh, because I don't see a friendly God putting parents who, who love their son unconditionally through something like this. What does your God say now, Mr. Walsh? Um,
I'm sorry, baby. You'll never love anyone. What is your name? Georgia. Georgia? Um... Your son... died so that you could keep your promise to him. His mother... died a few years ago. Passing was the only way that he could be with her. Nothing. Honestly, Leora, I don't know what just happened in there. What if I made all that stuff up? Did you? I don't know. I don't know where any of that came from. Yes, you do. Neil. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. Book the extra days in Russia. I already did. Here's your plane ticket. You're on the 10 o'clock. Thanks for everything. And I'll see you in New York.
feel abandoned, for I am always with you. I will not leave you. I cannot leave you, for you are my creation and my product. My daughter, my son, my purpose, and myself. Call on me, therefore, wherever and whenever you are separate from the peace that I am. I will be there.
you have a book for me to sign? No, I don't. But I wanted to thank you for writing it. Reading it didn't convince me that you're having conversations with God. It convinced me that I am too. Thank you. Well, well thank you.